brothers and sisters, the Lord is just giving us God's speed, truly. In this course, 307 on the fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, based on Ephesians 4 11 and 12, and all the way to 16, the Lord has been expounding these five offices. And so far, He has given us exposition on the book on uh, the office of apostle, the office of prophet, the office of evangelist, and the office of pastor. And today, we're going to be concluding the study on the office of pastor lesson five we're going to be looking at other relevant issues stay with us as we dwell now on this very part of the holy rich that the lord wants us to understand more because the office of pastor is more sensitive than the other offices this is one the lord gives access to the heart the mind the will the emotion of the saints like no other this is the one the saints trust more than any other food. Because of that, it's important we understand everything is shared with us in the five lessons in the office of pastor is so essential because it will equip us with the grace to excel in this office. There's something the world is doing more than Christians. It is excellence. The world, what they define as something that they need to they make sure they keep investing in it to bring it to the best they can. In the kingdom, everything is in the world. If we understand the world, if we're open to the world, then the Lord can take us from grace to grace and glory to glory. So, let's pray and get into the world. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to receive all you sharing with us about the office of pastor. Lord, today as we come into lesson five and the last one of each, we pray that you release whatever we need to receive to have our understanding complete. Let this be a refresher for many and let this be a learning, a learning experience for many. Holy Spirit, do what you do best. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Brothers, in the concluding this part of the study on the office of pastor, which we said is the most sensitive office function, it is very important that we give the Lord right away to top up whatever is taught us so far, so that as we keep in mind these things, and that the fact that the pastor is also a believer, a saint, first and foremost, so that we do not esteem them more highly than we ought to, or think that they are up there in that right environment, and before you know it, we begin to you know, think of them in such a way that it's not realistic. There are things the Lord needs to do in their life. That's why the last lesson was about the need for pastors to grow in grace. The last lesson. Now, in this lesson 29, other relevant issues, we need to just go back to something we did earlier about Paul and Timothy. You know, remember what we said that pastors, they need help. They need to grow. Older ministers should come alongside them. Don't focus on their weaknesses or, in, you know, inabilities or deficiencies. If the grace is there, if the calling is there, and listen to this, nobody makes anybody a pastor. That's something the Lord dropped in my spirit this morning. No church should appoint a pastor. A pastor is called by the Lord. What the, what the leadership does is to confirm what is already in that person from the Lord. Confirm it. And then begin to help. And so the need to therefore elder ministers to come alongside those who are called and encourage them, affirm them, strengthen them, correct them in love and guide them is so important. Let's take the case of Timothy. In 2 Timothy 1.5, Paul said of Timothy, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Louis, and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also, the young man had a good pedigree, he had a good background, the parents, mom was a believer, grandma was a believer. By the time Paul uh, Paul came into Timothy's life. He was young. He was insecure. He had many issues with which needed to be dealt with transparently and honestly. In dealing with them, Paul covered various aspects of his life. Today, you know what? Somebody would think that Paul was controlling Timothy because he covered every aspect of his life. 
he saw the potential, the great potential in the young man. And so by the Spirit, he began to address those things in a comprehensive way. For instance, 1 Timothy 1, 2. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from Elohim, our Father, and Yeshua, our Lord. Then in 1 Timothy 1, 18, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. I began to tell him, listen, the prophecies that have gone concerning you, they are not things you just go and lay back. No, through them you war a good warfare. Push back against Satan's plan or whatever he desires to negate what the Lord wants to do in your life. First Timothy 4, 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. He said, don't neglect the gift. He gave him instructions. Even things as simple as that, don't neglect it. Give heed to it. Give attention to it. Fan the flames. In 1 Timothy 5, 23, said, Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. He didn't mean alcohol. He meant wine, the fruit of the vine. He knew that Timothy had a lot of stomach issues. He said, Now, you know what? Leave water. That was in the days. Take a little wine because of the healing virtue of the, the fruit of the vine inside the intestines. In 1 Timothy 6, 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and opponents of opposition of signs, falsely so called. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, for Elohim has not given you us the spirit of fear, but of power of love of a sound mind to an insecure young man who was fearful. He told him, listen, it's not from the Lord. Anything that brings fear cannot be of the Lord. And even today, it's important to say, brothers and sisters, do not allow fear to grip your heart. Fear will bring torment. Fear will distort your reality. Fear will make you to respond to things you think that they are problems when there are no issues. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yeshua Hamashiach, and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Yeshua, no man that worrieth, entangleth himself with the affairs of his life, that it may please him who has called him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partake of the fruits. So Paul addressed various things in the life of Timothy. What is it that he was doing? He was simply building up this young man with a word, building him up with a word. And even about the ministry committed to him, Paul gave instructions. For instance, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, he gave instructions about the kind of people to be made bishops, the kind of people to be made deacons, the kind of qualities they needed. And then he went on in 1 Timothy chapter 5, and I began to give instructions concerning the church, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, the younger men as brethren, the older women as mothers, the younger sisters with all purity. He began to talk about widows how to honor them, how to bless them. He began to talk about how to take care of ministers, elders that rule well. He talked about how to run the church of Yeshua. He gave him all those instructions. And by the time Timothy received them, absorbed them, embraced them, in Second Tim in Philippians chapter 2, 19, look at the testimony of Paul. But I trust in the Lord Yeshua to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all care for their own, not the things which are Yeshua's. But you know the proof of him, that as a son with a father, he served with me in the gospel. So the testimony was that Timothy received the impartation, the mentorship, the instruction, the correction, and he turned out to be a very excellent vessel. 
He was still young, I think about 21, when he was made, you know, overseer of the church at Ephesus, the apostolic authority. He appointed bishops. He put in elders. He put in deacons in place because the mentorship had produced fruit. Every young pastor you see needs help, needs support, because it's a great assignment. Don't abandon them to themselves. You know what? Correct them, show them, guide them, give instructions, so that flesh does not take over. And it's such an important thing to know that by the time Paul was through with Timothy, as we told you in a previous study, he regarded him. He didn't keep him as a baby there perpetually. No, a time came. Paul began to treat Timothy as a co-laborer, as a colleague, as a compatriot, a companion in the gospel. And that's the idea. He started as a son of Paul. He ended up as a son of Elohim in the fullness. He, sent out, he ended up as a compatriot of Paul that he wrote in Second Corinthians 1, Philippians 1, Colossians 1, First Thessalonians 1. Each of them, he said, Paul and Timothy. The epistles as co-author because of the way he had taken this young man. It is an African proverb. When a young man washes his hand well, he is fit to dine with the elders, to have a meal with the elders. And so that's what happens when people undergo proper mentorship. So please, the point here is older ministers don't begin to look at the younger ones in the frame of where you are today. Consider where you were. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and you can be more, you know, more open, you know, to, to, to speak to them, to minister to them in love. So let's look at the issue that the office of a pastor, there are prospects of having over one fold. Most pastors are equally gifted with the office of teacher. The reason being that the word is the, the word of Elohim is the principal means of the pastoral office, is the word you feed people. And you feed it to them in such a way, creatively, in such a way that it's balanced, that they receive all the new trends in the world. They get to know the various aspects of the world, what it's supposed to do. Now, pastors also need to know, there's something we need to say here too. And that is that pastors should lay hold of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to understand what are those gifts that are there. Those gifts in First Corinthians 12 from verse 4, they are called enabling gifts in the sense that they, are, they don't stand on their own, but they walk in the life of somebody who is called to say the fivefold. And when you understand your own, you apply your enabling gifts to help you to be more effective. Your ministry will have cutting edge. For instance, if you're a pastor and you flow in the revelatory of person, uh, gifts like prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. What do you do? You deploy them. And as you deploy them, the Lord uses them to bring people together. And the Lord uses them to keep people. Then your pastoral grace, your office of pastor, now goes on to truly nurture them to perfection. Whereas a prophet with the same gifts may just speak and go. Your own is that they are going to be there with you. So what you do with them is very important. Your enabling gift just gives you a sharpening, cutting edge. So if you are gifted with, say, administration or leadership, it will show the way you structure things. It will show. It will give them, we say, miracle-working gifts as a pastor. You know what? The miracles are what will touch people. They go and bring others. They bring others because the gospel of the kingdom, science and wonder is part of it. But that's not the issue. The issue that you have on a five-fold call as a pastor. So the miracle working brings people together, keeps people coming. Then your pastoral grace goes to work with which you're able to do the work of the Lord. That's what he meant in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to verse 7. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same law. The way a pastor will administer a gift is different from the way a prophet will do. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to all to profit with all. So there's a way the Lord will use you in those charismatic gifts that you must recognize how they enable you to be a more effective pastor. But ultimately, the key to success is to identify and stay in the lane of the dominant office gift. 
if you're a pastor, that's your dominant calling. The other things are to enable you, to help you to do it better. And because it's easy for flesh to take over and suggest that you have all the fools, those called to be pastors should beware that they do not think that they have it all. Romans 12 says, verse 3, For I say through the grace that is given unto me, that to every man that is amongst you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as Elohim had dealt to every man the measure of faith. And that's important. So you got to know that the fact that you have maybe a revelatory gift does not necessarily make you a prophet, in that standing and if the lord has called you as a prophet in addition to be a pastor it is possible the lord can do it we're going to come to that in a moment now let us make allowance for the reality that in his sovereign will elohim may indeed give all the fivefold functions to whoever he pleases him we have no we can't quarrel with that so the question of can somebody have all the fools that is for elohim to determine but certainly somebody can have more than one or two you know what the taste of the pudding is in the eating. So if you see somebody manifest all those things, you don't need to go to argue, receive, as you see. Then there is the issue of transitioning from pastoral to other fools. The Lord has a way he does things. And over the course of history, those who are faithful in the pastoral office, the Lord blesses them with transitioning. And often it is to two often most of the time is to either a prophet or an apostle this is the general way he goes most people who excel because the pastor office is so sensitive you see he who is faithful in a little shall be worried with much when this shift occurs the mature saints and leaders will see it they will know they will see the grace they will see the shift the upward shift that has happened and then the job is to design this, esteem it, embrace that new shift so that it can do the work. But then, no matter how others embrace, the one who is called to be a pastor, until he accepts this shift, not much can happen. But rather than progress, the one who does not accept this shift, the ministry will become static or even retrogress. And if the pastor refuses to accept the upward call out of a religious mindset or shyness or fear of what people will say, hey, apostle, hey, prophet, you know what? If he allows people to make him not to take who the Lord has made him to be, the work just stays there. It becomes a glass ceiling over other people. Others cannot get up into the fullness of their calling because one is remaining where you used to be. It's the Lord that brought you there, but it's he who says, now I want to use you in this regard. So it's so important to know that for many people, if you refuse to take what the Lord is calling you, you can lose your joy. The cutting edge of delivery can be lost. Ministry can become grinding. It can be for people dull. It can be for people full of complaints. And the people under you are not going to be blessed the way they ought to be blessed because you refuse to accept. Transitioning is something real. You know, in 95, 96, the Lord began to put all kinds of dissatisfaction. The pastoral office seemed to have been doing well from what people were saying. But then, you know what, 95, I felt a stir in my spirit. A stirring. I just found no, no satisfaction again. And I began to inquire, and the Lord gave me the revelation of 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10 to 15. Hi, it was serious that <laughs> he didn't call first to serve the denomination, that the work of the denomination had ended, the discipleship part, and the services to the body. And for one year, resistance, because had good relationship with leaders, had good pastorate, doing well, so to say. But August 96, when at least one accepted and left the denominating thing to embrace the call to the body, such a powerful release, doing what now is clearly what was an apostolic ministry, but I didn't know. And it was from 96 August, all the way, to 2001 May. Check the time. Almost five years. 
that the Lord brought Apostle Vance, Apostle Deby into our lives and the intensive mentoring received from 2001, 2002, 2003 to 2004, that period of time, the Lord used the mentorship to do a stretching and assignments given to do a stretching and a snapping that brought forth the apostolic grace in fullness. At least to the extent the Lord brought it forth. So what I'm saying is that, listen, we need to be open to what the Lord will do. Now let's address the issue of first ladyship. The concept of first lady, first man, you see that on social media, in the house of Elohim, is an import from the world. It has no space in the church. Spouses of pastors should be respected and honored, but to create the side show which releases capacity for spirit of Jezebel to thrive is this is disingenuous. What kind of thing is that? First lady and first man, and their job is to wear the latest suit, the latest hat, the latest shoes, and to be a decoration on the altar? No. It doesn't make any sense. A better remedy is for pastors to encourage their spouses to be trained to understand, embrace, and walk in their own divinely imparted identities in Yeshua rather than take the identity of the spouse. It's not right to take the identity of the spouse. There is a calling of the Lord upon your life. Discover it and walk. And then, you know what? Use it to complement your spouse. And from this standpoint, you know what? The callings, the Lord begins to take them from place to place. And men and brethren, if you're a spouse of a man or woman of God, you know what? There's a book titled Ministry, Discover, Pursue, Fulfill. You can get it at the website of www.kingdombusclub.com or www.gsom.ac. And there are video versions of, the, of that uh, course available. And if you're a woman whose husband is a pastor, you can also lay hold on the book titled Women in Ministry from the Two Sides. Now let's talk something about the issue of breaking up congregations to start new ones. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Integrity requires that pastors serve with sincerity and end their tenure well. If you are not the overseer of a ministry, you are working under a man or woman of God who is overseer, please serve as unto the Lord. Don't begin to have a covetous heart and you begin to target some brethren, they are titles, they are this, they are that, and you think, hey, if I have them for myself, I start my ministry with them. If you have such thoughts, banish them. They are ungodly thoughts. They are destructive thoughts. Serve as unto the Lord. If the Lord ever calls you for a new walk, the Lord who calls will provide. And he knows how best to provide. If you begin to walk to destroy where you are because you want to take some people out, you are laying a bad foundation that walk against you. It will be a boomerang in the realm of the spirit. And it creates disorder. Men and brethren, it is important to serve well when you finish your tenure. Let the church be able to gather around, pray for you, wish you well, and bless you with whatever seed the Lord gives to them. And then you can go and prosper there. Why is it so? First Corinthians 14, for Elohim is not, verse 33, Elohim is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. And in verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. Do everything decently and in order. Men and brethren, there's also something the Lord wants us to address. It is a sad reality. There are many people in the dying days of the gospel who will be like sheep without shepherd, without pastors. They're just going around, doing whatever they like. They don't submit to anyone. They live anyhow, speak anyhow, act anyhow, and it's not proper. It's not right. In the way the Lord has ordained his kingdom, every soul should have somebody you relate with for accountability, especially if you're a young saint, you are one who, you know, let there be order. The Bible says we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves as some manner of some is. So there is a place the Lord connects you if you are open, Holy Spirit will show you so that you are not filled with confusion. There are a lot of people people are doing today. They just go to, you know, that social media. They grab that from that one. They grab that. They grab that. And what they grab is pure confusion. 
kingdom-minded ones who give them kingdom truth, religious-minded ones who give them religious truth, and people are competing for their pocket, people are competing for their hearts. James says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There is a place you are appointed to be part of. Connect there, settle, give your best there, and the Lord is glorified. And now it's so important that we also recognize that social media is a reality. A lot of pastors did not understand social media. They even fought against it. They fought like some religious people fought against television. Some pastors fought against social media until COVID hit. And the four walls of churches had to be broken up for people to communicate. Social media is real. You can have real relationships on social media. Even some people, marriage relationships have happened. Social relationships have happened. Economic relationships, business relationships have happened. So also some people have found, you know, real safe, healthy social media families on social media. It all depends on what Holy Spirit is leading. Anywhere the Lord has ordained for you to be part of, you will know it by the atmosphere there. You know it by the space there for you. You also know it there by your growth in grace, your empowerment. And it's so important for you to know that don't make the decision yourself. Let it not be the charisma of a man or woman is attracting your reputation or title. Let it be that Romans 8, 14, Holy Spirit is leading you all things, including an online community where you find uh, acceptance where your gift and calling can come forth. Let us recognize that. And you know what? When we recognize that, many serious ministries will begin to have proper online um, extensions. I will recommend that every ministry begin to think about appointing a, an online pastor is very important whose job will be to you know kind of nurture the people who are connecting through social media if the overseer doesn't have enough social media exposure let such a person do the connecting it's so important and brothers and sisters walk in your identity if you are called to be a pastor don't despise the that office of tight uh, office title called pastor there's a modern world now where people are doing all kinds of things the so-called modern people in the liberal level they are now prefer a coach business coach coach this and all that okay fine if it's your profession that's okay but when you are doing elohim's work take what he called it pastor shepherd under shepherd receive it and walk in it We've got to avoid Babylonian titles such as reverend, most reverend, very reverend, your lordship. These are Babylonian, your grace. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Let Babylon take care of itself. If you're in the kingdom, be in the kingdom. We have only one bishop. We have only one lord. We have only one grace. And that is his grace. Men and brethren, we want to say this to you. Again, don't offer power pastor it to people except they are called first if you do it just to grow your church and to get more branches you might run into problem but people who are in the fivefold who have pastoral grace who have grace to care nurture for others if the assignments come you can give them assignment and if the lord wants them to transition into that also in addition to what they have the lord will let them know and if not the lord will let them know they will be able to have the grace to handle it so by way of assignment or uh, before then let me encourage you share this video and let the lord use the message here to help the people to have their learning complete in the office of pastor so share it with friends and share also in groups we belong to just ask the talk to the person who is the moderator of the book and say you know what i'm part of a, a teaching ministry the lord brings forth truth and i would like to share some of them here if he says yes every day share it and the lord bless you as you do so so by way of assignment number one why should mature ministers mentor those who are called to office of pastor but are not yet fully mature why is it necessary why do we have to you know speak into their life and help them to get where they ought to do two can an individual be given over one fold is it possible Three, please explain how pastors can be transitioned into other offices and what are the two offices that is often open for them. Four, 
why is it carnal or worldly for spouses or pastors to take titles like first lady or first gentleman? And five, what new insight did you gain from the lesson today? One thank Lord for you and pray and by God Elohim's grace, next lesson will begin the office of teacher. And we go on. When we finish, then we go into the concluding remarks. And this will be the latest iteration of Course 307. I want to say this to you, just in case some of you are wondering about the course title, if you have been new in our, to our teaching series, I want to say this to you. By the grace of the Lord, the Lord showed us how the very courses is released can be structured or better structure to deliver. So we now structure them as basic course in ministry. Second, intermediate course in ministry. And then advanced course in ministry. So the 100 level courses are the basic. And then the 200 level courses are in the intermediate. And the 300 level courses are in the advanced. And one of them is this course 3057. The fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The pastor being this finger, represented by this finger, that cares about everything about an individual's life. You no know, life, health, strength, marriage, family, everything. And that's a sensitive office. And that's one we just concluded today. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. Thank you for your grace that is released with your word. Lord, let this grace go to work and let this grace produce fruit in the hearers, O oh God. Father, challenge us to excellence and encourage us not to stop until we get there. Have your way, O oh Lord. Let there be fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, as of this word that has been sown in the heart of your people. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, about 10.30 a.m. UK time, and that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday, and then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac, to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.